Hey ma'am, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, where are we at? Bradenton, Florida. Okay, what's life like out here on the streets of Bradenton, Florida? I've been out here the last 18 months. Okay. I moved down here from Boston. Okay. And I moved down here to change my life. You're not life. a Red Sox fan, are you? Yes, I am, all the way. <laughs> All the way, Patriots, okay. Red Sox, yes. Okay. I definitely am. Uh -huh. But um, I moved down here with my husband. Um, and yeah. um, that's when all the pandemic stuff was going on with the coronavirus and everything. So we was getting that PUA money. Yeah. You know, so we got real um, rich and real high real fast. And wow. so um, things just got really bad quick. And um, we moved down here for four months and lived in a hotel. And then we were broke. Okay. And so we ended up in a tent across the street from Home Depot. And um, one day he was supposed to go get a money order from his mom, and he just bounced and never came back. Gotcha. So he left you? Yeah, he left me gotcha. out here. Um, I mean, obviously you're struggling a little bit. Like, can you talk about, like, how that affects your life? I mean... Yeah, it's, um, it, it sucks. I've been, I've been to the port twice. Yeah. Um, because I have a, a fetty habit, and, yeah. um... I, I didn't before I came down here. I was on Suboxone. I was on two milligrams a day. I was taking, I have five kids and I had a life and a home back in, in Boston. And um, we came down here for him to work and do something else, but yeah. he didn't want to do that. He just wanted to stay and get high. So you have five kids? Yeah, five kids. I was with their dad for 20 years, and um, but we were both addicts. So at the end, we couldn't stay clean together. So, you know, it was better for us to part. And now he's got five years clean and he's engaged. You know what I'm saying? And um, he has a new baby, but he's involved with all my kids, and uh, now I'm down here struggling with an addiction. So, do you and, still feel like a human sometimes? Is it hard for you? I mean, especially being a female on the streets. Yeah, it's a, it's hard because um, people want to try you all the time because they assume that you're a female. They want, they think that they can, that everything has a price. Yeah. But with me, it doesn't. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? There's yeah. some lines I still won't cross, yeah. and I ain't gonna start crossing them at 44 years old. You yeah. feel me? So, and I'm not gonna. I have three sons and two daughters so yeah. those things I just feel like if I cross that line yeah. that I mean I'm not no better than nobody else and I don't knock nobody's hustle that's their business yeah. but I feel like for me it would break my spirit if period. You could, if you had the ability to right now stop your addiction right now what are you doing? Yes absolutely yeah. it, it's a process it's definitely a process and um, it's crazy because today we was at um uh, I stay up like mostly up 64 like in the circle over there because it's like a um, I feel safer there and um, two of my friends stepped up and helped me when my husband left me so that nobody would try me or try to turn me out or some bad didn't happen to me and then um, last year on my birthday because I wouldn't walk in the woods by myself because I'm afraid yeah. so um, I was across the street from um, Publix on 64 and somebody football tackled me from behind and I got attacked on 64 so now I, I really don't want to be out. So you know like, what I'm saying? As a normal person, those types of things never happen to you. But when you're homeless, people prey on you more. Yeah, it seems so. But nobody, I was out here for 18 months and nobody did that. But it, I don't know. It was just the weirdest thing because I literally was waiting at a bus stop on, on, on the side of 64 at 6 o'clock in the morning. Like, you don't think something like that would happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? How far Usually, on 64? Like, towards the sub? Towards um, right ramp? Um, up towards, like, 75. It was so right up there. where Publix see, is in Thornton's. That's crazy, yeah. Yeah, it I is. I went in the woods back there uh, to do a video, and there were needles everywhere. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I don't understand. Like, just because you're homeless doesn't mean you have to be a scumbag and um, do some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's no reason. I don't know how it is down here, but... At home, they have clean needle laws, and they have like um. Florida doesn't have anything. Yeah, see, they have the needle exchange and all that stuff. So if you're doing that shit yeah. and you bring your needles back to dispose of them properly, then they give you clean ones yeah. so you have them. Because um, I mean, a lot of people out here they got HIV. I see a lot of shit. People Man, shoot each other's blood and all, all kinds of shit, bro. Uh, it's bad. Yeah. It's really bad down here. I never uh, seen things even like that. Buy needles in Florida, like. How do you even get them? Is um, no, you can get them at at, um, at Walmart. You can buy them for yeah. um for the box of 100. They're 12.97. So there's no reason for people to be using dirty needles. You know what I mean? I've yeah. seen people pick needles up off the ground and just use them. Yeah. Like there's no need for that shit. You know what I mean? And then they wonder why people have HIV and and, in and Boston, hepatitis C. If you were in your situation back in Boston, do they offer you more help in, in Massachusetts in here? Yeah. Like once you're in Florida, you're trapped because there's no help at all. Yeah, there's not that much help out here. There's yeah. not that Have much at all. Have you ever thought about leaving Florida to go to Yeah, the actually, I was talking to um, she's, um the housing coalition, like the homeless yeah. coalition. Um, she's a sergeant through the sheriff's department, mm -hmm. and um, 
they offer this thing. It's um, Project Homer Bound. I just don't want to go home strung out again. You know what I mean? Like go back to my kids a mess. So I heard she had just told me you today. You don't want your kids to see you like No, that. I don't want them to see me like this at all. Mm. And um, there's a program, she said that just opened behind here. She mm. said Wawa on First Street. It's a new halfway house, it's a women's program. Yeah. So I have to go with her tomorrow to fill out an application for that because I'm starting the process because I can't continue to do this. Fat, how much can somebody spend on that crap on a, in a day? I don't know, I mean, I, I can do a gram or a gram and a half, that's $120. A day? Yeah, you can do that much, yeah. So there's people on the streets homeless who are spending a hundred dollars a day. Mm -hmm. That's enough to buy an apart a beautiful apartment. Yeah, but With you know what the problem is sucks is that that the the background check and all the extra oh, yeah, shit. Of course, yeah, and and then like it's like sometimes you don't have that two hundred dollars to kick up front for them to do the to yeah. do that shit. And it's like it's because of people that do scumbag shit. There's no handshake and nobody's word means shit anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's really hard. No, we'll get, but if you think about it. That's enough money to buy a really beautiful place. Yes, it is. It is. Place. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I was in a program like but um it wasn't I wasn't ready. Yeah. Um I went like and my boyfriend was using again when he he got out of jail and he went straight to the program. He tried so hard to get me in there. He got me in there, but he had messed up. I tried to tell him like cuz he was like, "Oh, I only hit the foil." Yeah. I'm like, "Well, only, uh, I don't shouldn't have said his name, but I'm oh, like, babe, yeah, you're not I'll the only. Okay, you're, thank you, sweetheart. Will, you're I'll not the only out. one that. Yeah. You're not the only junkie that can go backwards. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't go from shooting fat and all to back to just smoking weed and drinking. It doesn't happen like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like have for you ever me. Have about like that one day? I mean, people overdose and die. Yeah. Uh, doesn't have you ever been close to that? Have you ever? Have oh yeah. I, honestly, I'll tell you market? what. When I got a, let when I got out of jail in um. February, yeah. I overdosed every day for a week. My poor boyfriend was a mess because I, I always think like, it's not gonna be me, it's not gonna be me, it's not gonna be yeah. me. But for seven days in a row, I got knocked and like. Seven days in a row? Mm, yeah. Roughly. Okay, so it was a time period. Set five around there. Yeah, like, and, and because, you know, it was like, I, I don't, I don't, sometimes I don't, I always think I'm invincible and this shit and it, it's not true because yeah. there is people around here that have died around me like have you not ever around lost me anybody that you love or a yeah my best friend when i was um 19 and he was 21 and he od'd and he didn't do it all the time either that's when it was heroin yeah. you know and um it was a lot of benzos like with the xanax and mixing yeah. mixing stuff so you've lost people yeah a lot of people Doesn't over the years None of that, I mean, the grip that that stuff holds on you is that strong that you can't... Yeah, it sucks because it's like, it's not that you don't love anybody, you don't think about it. Yeah. It's just you get so caught up in the grips of addiction that it's like, um, sometimes it just has a, like the strongest hold. It's like the love of your kids, the love of your family and all that stuff. Like, it, it seems like it doesn't hit you until you're, when you stop and realize how much destruction you've actually done, you know? Yeah. It's hard. So it's like, I've, most people that I talk to tell me, they want to be a normal person, but it, it just grabs them and it won't let you. I was number homeless until last year. Okay. <laughs> so. And so all the homelessness started in Florida. Mm-hmm. Up north, you were never homeless. No, when I was a kid, I yeah. used to run away and shit, but you know, it was couch surfing. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I was a teenager and I used to run away and be, do, do stupid shit, you know? Yeah. But never as an adult, never. So what's it like the first day you end up homeless, like for real, and you realize, okay, I'm out here and this is my life now? I can't even explain it to you. Yeah. It just feels like, um, it, are you serious? Is this where, yeah. is this where I'm at? Yeah. I'm like 44 years old. Yeah. This shit isn't fun anymore. Like when I first started getting clean, I, yeah. I get clean two years, 18 months, two years, and it's like almost like you lose your gratitude of having a place to sleep every night, a warm shower, something to eat, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then you go out and get high and you think you can get high. With me, it always starts with thinking I'm slick, doing dumb shit, you know? Yeah. Like I go to the doctors and I'll get my prescriptions or oh, Xanax, you know, I'll start yeah. taking Xanax again. So the, legal, the legal drugs 
are lead me right the back. They're yeah, the, the they lead me right back to that because so, I don't feel like an addict. So do you can, feel like the pharmaceutical companies have a responsibility? Yeah, I get. I mean, they do. Yeah. They do. At the end of the day, I mean, they. There's not a reason that they stop. They stop making oxycontin like the oxy 80s and all that shit yeah. gel up and all that stuff because people were shooting them or sniffing them and all that shit this they know it's a problem people, they know there's a problem crap, yeah. exactly they so know it questions. what brings you happiness every day little things that you like to do or not about your personality um i'm very outgoing and i like helping people anyway which yeah. is crazy because a lot of i have found a lot of people down here yeah. are so backwards it's like they don't they think solid and loyalty is like a tattoo on their neck they don't even know what those words mean the people that i'm in the street with you know and it's really sad because i really try because some of the girls are younger you know what i mean and i really try because i get that mom thing about me i have five kids you yeah. know what i mean and some of them are 28 30 you know what i'm saying i got almost 15 years on them so yeah. i always try to like get, you know give them some clothes or whatever because I mean, I'm not saying that it's great, but I boost sometimes, and that's what I do. Yeah. And hey, and that's how I get by. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna. Have you ever been caught boosting? Yes, I have. I've been to the port twice out here. Twice. Mm -hmm. Okay. When, when they catch you doing that, um, how long did they put you in there for? The first time? Well, the first time, I wouldn't have got jail time the first time, um, yeah. because they gave me a notice to appear, and if I would have took probation, mm -hmm. um. The problem was is I didn't have no ties to the community, right? So I didn't have, like, the bondsman doesn't want to oh, bomb yeah. me out. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I don't have no ties to the community. I could have just went back home and said, see you later to me in the yeah. county, you know? So when I went to court for my first court date, because they gave me first appearance I and mean, all that. So when you do boosting, I mean, when you walk into a store, obviously somebody can see, you know, your behavior. Suspicious. I mean, do you master that? Because if I was on, not, not to not to be pre prejudiced, but mm -hmm. prejudice, right? But like, if I see you walk into a store, I might assume you're homeless and be like, okay, eyes on her. Like, yeah. Does that make boosting harder for you? Sometimes, but I I get dressed and um, I don't know. I just I think it's bad because I was on the same street for a long time, like yeah. the same stores. So they do know, and they are. They're not stupid out here because there's a lot of homeless community oh, out yeah. here. You know what I mean? They are not dumb. Do you dumb. feel like because it's a store that you're doing that from, that you're not hurting an individual as much? I mean, no, because at the end of the day, I'm still being a scumbag, but um, <laughs> okay. you know what I mean? I'm keeping it real. Yeah, I won't yeah. steal from another homeless person and I won't steal from people. Okay, so high five on that. Mm -hmm. I and don't you're do already that. already out here. Well, yeah. don't, don't hurt other people that are already down. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, don't see the why they do that. One of the that I see in Darrington, Bradenton, it's that other people, like, don't take advantage of somebody who's already in a exactly. messed up spot. Exactly. Okay. It's terrible. Do you have any dreams or goals for your life at this moment? Yeah, actually, I want to be <laughs> sober and at least, and by next year, yeah. by my birthday is yeah. September 22nd, by next year, my birthday, I want to be in my own spot yeah. and be able to so that and working and, you know, have a little so hoopty. you're not giving up? No, absolutely not. You're I'm going to be 45 years old. I'm not going to give up. No way. You're going to keep up fighting. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. Of course. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Be smart out there. Yeah. And uh, my channel is called Southern Life. That's where I'm gonna upload. Southern Life. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, we just hit 100,000 subscribers. That's awesome. And I probably I'm gonna log on to there too. Yeah. I'm, gonna I'm gonna subscribe. Gonna I'm gonna. I want my audience to know. So I'll say, I probably won't make back what I'm gonna give you. Uh huh. Okay. So try. I know you have your struggles, but what I'm giving you. Yeah. I doubt the video will make me that much. Okay. Okay. For that video to make me back what I'm gonna <laughs> give you. I, it would have to reach like 80 or 90,000 people, and I don't think it will. Okay. So just know that this is a small opportunity. Yeah, but you. I can pay it forward, you know, yeah. some way. Okay. You know? But just know that I'm not profiting off of you. Yeah, and uh, I don't think so. I know. Even. Yeah. If the video got 300,000 views, that would be a different story. Yeah, yeah. So um, try to be, you know, and I know it's hard with your struggle, but um, I, I promise you I'm going to pay you and I have to pay you. Mm -hmm. But just know that when I'm paying you, I probably won't see that back. Hopefully thank I will. you. Thank but you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you're and, uh, welcome. I'm good. Thank you, you for talking to, talk to me. Thank you, sweetheart. And guys, the truth about these interviews is I usually do not make this money back. Unless the interview gets a crap load of money, like views and all, I don't make it back. Most of the time, it just gives somebody the opportunity to get some money in their hands. But unfortunately... I can't control what they do with that money. And she was honest with us and gave us probably one of the best interviews we've had. 
So maybe since she actually gave us an awesome interview, we'll do good, but um, that's life out here in the streets of Branson.